I'd like to bring the automotive flat glass and auto, uh, flat, excuse me, flat glass and auto glass examining board to, to order, uh, November 17th, 2022. Could we have a review of the minutes from the previous meeting? Has everyone read them? Yes, sir. Yep, I sure did. Can I get a motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from the September 15th, 2022 meeting. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Here, that's uh, any comments or concerns of any person present today? No? Good. I, 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 well, I'm not sure if it comes up now or Later, Eddie. Have but you I got a to... schedule of our agenda, Joe? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Because we have old business, new business, and course. Okay. Our, my, my apologies. Go no, just, just asking, that's all. Yep. Okay. The uh, DCP, Pamela. Where is she? Is Pamela still here? I'm still here, but Janita Hamill is here also. I believe that she will be reporting out today. Okay. Good morning, Janita. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Sorry you're under the weather. Um, Thank you. I, I uh, sent the uh, board report that mm -hmm. was for the two month period from September 1st, 2022 through September 31st of 2022. Um, the occupational enforcement unit took in two new complaints and we have not closed any files. Okay, so those, current, those are current and open right now? Yes, sir, Mr. Good. Chairman. Okay. Well, thank you, Jeanine. Anything else that we should know about? Um, I have two new inspectors. Congratulations. Good. They're, so they're, how many are you up to now, six? No, four. Oh. <laughs> Including yourself? No, that's four plus me, sir. Okay. Um, they, the two new gentlemen replaced Jack Corduner and Todd Belcourt, both of whom retired, be, uh, Jack in March and Todd in June. And they started at the end of September. So. Uh, and their names would be? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chris Bowman and Roger Guild. So we could look for them out on the jobs, I believe. Uh, yes, sir. Great. Anything else, Janita? Um, no, just that I would wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Oh, well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Janita. Thank you, sir. Anything else on the investigative division? Any were there any questions, Jen? For those, there's still two open, so they won't answer any questions about those two. Uh, well, no, I mean, I think from that letter there might be some questions, but we're not at that new business yet. Okay. Uh, the old business is a continued discussion regarding proposed regulations pertaining to the definition of licensable glazer work. We'd like to discuss that, or should we bring that in when we do new business? Well, they kind of go hand in hand. It said in our last uh, minutes that Paul Grabowski was going to tell us the next steps to move forward with proposed regulations. So I don't know if we know that yet. So I don't, I don't know if we have um, Leslie O'Brien on or not, our legislative director, but. Um, the, the messages I've gotten from the department are that uh, the kind of changes that are have been sought in the past are the kind of changes that need to be done through statute. So the things that have been discussed as far as what's licensable, what's exempt from licensing are the kinds of things that need to be done through uh, statutory right revisions. Um, that's the message that I've gotten. So, uh, and I don't know if Leslie's, um, Shannon, do we have Leslie on or not? 
No, um, okay. she hasn't come into the meeting. So yeah, we can try to get Leslie for a future meeting as well to see if there's any other clarification she can provide. But that's the um, that's the messaging that I've got. That's what I've got. Well, yeah, I mean, we kind of keep going around and around. I mean, we're happy. I think with our regulate the actual law that unless it's pre glazed, it's our work. It's the liberty that's been taken with the word pre glazed that we're having the issue with. Right, and that's where there could be added clarification in statute. I, you know, that's where you would have to seek that. Yeah. Right now, there's only two exemptions. I'm sorry, my name is Joe Fazzino. Um, there's only two exemptions in the law, and they seem to be making exemptions on their own. They're they're, right. they're they're clearly stated, and and people in the industry, it's very clearly stated how it's written. So we're just trying to figure out, as a licensed glazer myself. What are you guys determining out there? They're, they're making determinations on my license without even asking the people who do the work if it's something that we do. So I, and something's got to get done here because I, I, I'd like to know what the department really thinks our license is. What do you guys consider a Glazer license required for? Because it seems like every time we do something, the license doesn't apply to it anymore. I don't know what it is. is. Is it a sharp piece of glass that we pick up and put over here? That you need a license for that. I, that's it. Seems to me that's what you guys have gone to, which is crazy. So that's my two cents right there. Uh, it, it's just it's nuts. Paul, do um, you're saying that we have to uh, get the regs brought into law? Do we have to go to the law committee? So as far as for stat for changing the statute, right? Um, that's what would need to be done. And then, yeah, the general law committee. Um, I see Janita's hand is up. Uh, Janita, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might be recognized for one minute, please, sir. Sure. Um, just with what Mr. Fizzino's comments were, I just want to make it emphatically clear that the inspectors and I do not go out in the field and make a licensing law determination at any time. We go by what the statutes and the regulations say with guidance from the legal department when we return to the office. But my staff is not running around out in the field making exemptions here, there, and every other where on glaciers or any other occupational trade that we regulate. Thank you. Um, I don't know if that was Mr. Fazino's intent. That's up to him to describe it. Well, I, I, I and, and, and Gina with you know, I, I uh, Janita, I'm sorry, but I, I'm referring to like one of the things just recently is the handrail, glass handrail that we got from, I guess, Mr. Messner. Uh, told that, Mr. Fizzino, he, if I might, yep. please, that has yep. nothing to do with me and okay. my my investigative team that we'll be okay. touching on the legal department. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll be right. touching on that in the next the next segment. Okay, and it wasn't intended at you then, Janine. I'm sorry. It's just this is what's happening here. And I'm just looking so for back to answer. Mr. Grabowski. So you're saying that the statute only can be changed through the law? Yeah. So yeah, a new a, a new law, right? You'd have to go to the legislature this upcoming session, uh, work with somebody to get something proposed. Um, that's what would have to be done, and we can certainly um, we can certainly meet with our legislative director too to discuss the process more in depth or any of this stuff. Um, but yeah, that's what would have to be done. Okay. So right, any, but, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, the whole issue here is that the law is fine. It's that we were asked to do a work or a, in the regs, we were just asked to give a definition of what we did as a trade to, to help clarify for the inspectors when they go on to the job site, so they know what our trade is and what our trade is not. And, you know, moving a little bit ahead to this letter that I received a copy of saying that the department is determining that because the glass isn't overhead over a ceiling, then it's not in the scope of FG one and two. I'm just not sure where they, that determination was made where it, it only says pre-glazed windows and doors are exempt. 
So I'm not sure where the determination came of saying, well, any if it's not overhead, it's not our scope. So does that mean a glazer straight is only skylights and overhead glazing? I, who I, I just I'm just confused at how the state tells us we have to go do regs and or go back to legislator and rewrite a law because we're not allowed to change the rule, but yet the department or somebody at the state is determining what our trade is every time an, an inspector goes out or a case gets brought up, we're seeing a new change in what our trade is. So I think as a board, I think we kind of feel like somebody's got, somebody seems to think they know what our trade does. So what is it we do? Okay, with that. What, what is it we do? With that, we're gonna jump into new business because we're gonna find out what we do now. I have a letter here addressed to the Consumer Protection dated October 19th to Pamela Brown, I believe. Yes, to a Pamela Brown director from the Foundation of Fear Contracting about a job going on and for Whiting Turner, I believe it's in Stanford, Connecticut. Let's go uh, for AM Architectural Metal and Glass located at Five Bridge Street in New York, uh, Granville, New York. Gotham Glass is performing the glass handrail on the roof of the Smythe, I guess the Smythe apartment building. The glass for the handrail is not pre glazed. They are raw sheets of glass, which is what we do. One of our affiliates have visited the job on September 15, 2022. We spoke with one of Gotham Glass employees, a gentleman named Willie. This work confirmed to our affiliate that he was not licensed to install the handrail glass. It goes on to say there are four pictures of our affiliate took the raw glass that was being installed on the roof of the Smite building. Mr. Chairman, if I might intercede, please. Mr. Jim. Please do not discuss that that particular letter or that location. That's part of an open investigation right now, sir. Well, we should have been notified of that then. We should have been notified before the meeting that we did not could not discuss this because it was an open investigation. So that is where that was why it was put on the agenda because there was a discussion to follow. So the, the, yeah, the Gotham is open. That correspondence was sent to all the board members without, you know, without DCP. DCP did not send that. So you were all made of, aware of those things with Gotham beforehand anyways. But the United, I think the issue, let, more so than Gotham, is the United Steel and the United Steel correspondence, which you can still bring up for discussion yeah, as it that, relates that, to yeah. handrails. Right. So exactly. avoid avoid Gotham, but you can certainly discuss the United um, United Steel. And if you look at the email correspondence between the United the Steel and mm -hmm. the state of Connecticut, there's okay. some there's some questions here that the state asks, saying one you know, they needed to confirm. The department wanted to know if there no systems will be installed that will be structural or load bearing. All glass work will be internal only. The glass to be installed will have finished edges and no cutting of the glass is required. So <laughs> I'm just concerned that, you know, that who made that list that is that how we determine if it's licensable work or not? because it should be, is it a commercial building? Is it, if it's residential, is it greater than 30 square feet? Is it a pre-glazed window or door? Those should be the three questions or a manufacturer. Cause that's, not our, sure. that's the law. That's what the that's, statute says. I'm not sure Thank you. where these four questions, who wrote those, who determined that those were the right questions to ask. So it, it, all glass work will be internal only. So no glazing in an inside of a building is licensable. That's not written in the statute. No, I don't. So John so, Messner would like to defend himself here because uh, it's from him. So they, let me 
if I could just for before I, uh, we go to John, okay. um, my understanding, looking through the history of this a little bit, is that legal the legal department's interpretation has been consistent going back probably like five or six years. Um, when looking at pre-glazed and pre-glazed materials, um, looking at windows, doors, it's been determined also non-bearing walls, partitions, and modular furniture. Those are the things that, if they're pre-glazed, do not require a, a glazing license. So that's kind of that's been the interpretation. Um, pre pre glazed meaning that the glass is in the frame. That's what pre glazed means. The glass is in a frame. When you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you buy a window off the shelf that has a top and a bottom piece of glass in a vinyl frame. That is called pre-glazed because the act of putting the glass in that frame has already been done for you. Glazing is a verb. Pre-glazed, it's been pre-done for you. And all you're doing is putting that window or that door in a hole. You've touched no glass. That's the accepted definition in the dictionary. Oh, it has nothing to do with the IRS regulations that say if you put a glass wall up that can be removed, it's considered furniture. Because in my yeah. opinion, furniture you sit on. And anytime you handle glass as a glazer, you should be licensed. Yeah. Along with the systems that hold it. And glass cutting is... is why would you cut the glass if it's safety glass? It's tempered, you can't cut it. So that makes zero sense. Yeah, all I have to go on is the, the past determinations of the legal department. Um, and that's that's what they, they've held, that's what we've held. So I don't know if John has anything else to add to it, but that's kind of the guidance that we've had. It's been the it's consistent guidance, you know, that we've had for the last five years or so, um, from what I can see in the history of it. Yes, uh, good, good morning board, uh, Paul, thank you. Um, just to follow up with uh, what Paul just mentioned, that was a determination, an internal memo that has been utilized by the agency since 2018 uh, in determining uh, matters that involve similar to what was brought to the attention with the United Steel case. So upon receiving the photos, looking for interpretation on the particular case with United Steel, uh, it was reviewed, the questions were forwarded, and a response was received. And that's that's where that letter came from. So for five years, they've entangled us in this mess because every five or 10 years when you people change your uh, bosses or uh, allegiances or whatever, we have to do a dog and pony show which means we bring all our stuff in from all the contractors, which I am not, but Jen and Carl are, and they bring in and they show what a pre-glazed unit looks like, what a glazed unit looks like, what glass looks like. And that is what we did several years ago. And it was going well for a while, but now it's- So it's for 17 hands. years, for 17 years, it was a different way. And for the last five years, it changed without our knowledge. Correct. If I, two seconds here. Without, two, without going to the legislator. In, in that, 2018, DCP sat in one of these meetings and was oh, asked- John, excuse me one sec. John's trying to buzz into the meeting. Okay. Wisniewski. Well, the DCP was in a meeting, their, their legal team was in a meeting and they were asked until the statute changed, how are they gonna enforce? And they're gonna, they, they said demountable glass walls required a license right in the middle of the meeting, we have it. So how did that change from 2018 to now you guys determine it doesn't need it? And then how are you determining that glass handrail doesn't need it? When, when we have to study glass handrails in order to get our license, that's part of our license prep class. So and, I, and I, cutting just, glass too. I, I, I just don't understand. You guys don't even ask the industry about what's part of our license. You guys determining how to do it, how to, what to do it on your own. It, 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 it makes no sense. That, that's my two cents again. And this, the industry is sitting at this board between John, 
Carl, Jen, myself. So uh, we would appreciate some kind of heads up when you start changing the rules and regulations for us, because we've been trying to get the regulations in for the last 17, 18 years. And every time we do, we get a new attorney. Nothing against you, Mr. Grabowski, but we've had several of them. And you'll go on to bigger and better things in the next couple of years. Trust me, you will. Hi, <clears throat> I, I just got on here. Sorry. I never Hi, got Dan. I never got any email or link. Thank you for sending it now. The last one I got was in September. I just checked. Yeah, I, I saw you on there, but maybe they have your old email, John. We'll have to have her check it after. I had a, yeah, I had them change it a, a long time ago to the John Wisniewski 247 from Payless, but I don't know. No, I checked everywhere. Anyway, I'm here. Well, I missed John. anything. <laughs> so, yeah, I missed anything? Yeah. Good, Paul. Sorry. Um, yeah, and just in talking to folks here, this has been what I was told anyway, this has been consistent for the last several years that this has been made known to folks that this is how the department was looking at this. I know there was at least a memo from the legal department in 2017 talking about windows, doors, non-bearing walls, partitions, and modular furniture. I know that I, that went out, I think, to the union at least um, and some other folks. So, uh, you know, it's news to me that it's a surprise to folks that this is how it's been going because it seems to be rather consistent uh, from my understanding of it. But I certainly apologize if it's a blindside sort of situation. Um, there's enough ambiguity in the statute. That's why we say the statute would have to be, you know, more specific if we want to, if you want to get to that point where it's very clear that any of this pre-glazed material should be done by a glazier, then it's going to have to be specified very clearly in statute because there's just so many different pre-glazed products now. Um, and that seems to be what Such the issue a, I'm just curious, what, what are the new pre-glazed products? Well, I'm not I'm, saying there's anything new, sure and I'm not are. claiming to be an expert, but right, even just going through the list of what I said already, talking about all the different types of demountable, demountable wall systems. Um, but when you, when, about it's glass the, handrail. when it's demountable, the glass is not in a frame. You put the tracks up, and you set the glass into the tracks. So that's if, glazing. That's glazing. Glazing systems. Exactly. So again, then that should be more specified in the law, right? So it's crystal clear that well, that's what I, it is. Well, no, it, is also, it, it is also crystal clear that if it's a commercial project, you need a glazing license. That's in the statute. So right. that should be the first question asked. So I don't, I don't want to bicker and go back and forth. No, I, 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 mean, I, I obviously no. I'm not an expert on glazing either, right? So I don't need to get, you know. A, I mean, you're, you know, the statute is so bare. There's so little there that it would be helpful to have it filled in more. Um, I mean, you can see how short it is when you look at 20-33016. That's there's not much there. Commercial, residential, installing, maintaining glass, right? So having this clarification if that's what the board wants or wants to seek, uh, would be necessary, right? But every time we've tried to do that, Paul, it's not now fault of your own. We've met right. resistance to- And we've, we've been statute. told we go the state statute way and then we get we develop it and get three quarters of the way through. And then the legislators say, well, you need to deal with that in regulation. You have to so make we it go back and we get three quarters of the way through regulation and they say, oh, no, you need to go to state statute. Twenty two years we've been trying to do this. It's and and also years. not, you know, not for nothing, but we have a three year apprenticeship program and we have a work schedule. And on that work schedule details, letter A through L or M or whatever it is, listing all the things that in order to get our license, you have to do. So. If we don't have to do, if all those things that we're teaching in the three-year program is not licensable, then why do why are we licensing people? You have to look at from the tradesman side as well, because if we're teaching them, you know, to how to cut glass, and now apparently if you're cutting glass, you don't need a license. And if you're telling that, showing them how to put in office partitions and Oh no, that's not part of your trade either. So at that point, 
why are they going to go through an apprenticeship program and why are they going to get a license for something that the state is saying they don't need? I mean, you go to the state of Connecticut's website, Department of Labor, which I've sent that link to several people in the state now, you can watch a video about what lasers do. You can read a blurb about what lasers do. And then the then legal is saying, oh no, lasers don't do that. So I say, maybe legal should tell us what a laser does. And then we should be able to then determine maybe we don't need to have a license to do our trade because it's not really a trade at this point. Because we, 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 our initial intention of this license way back 30 years ago now, or however long was to bring some respect to the trade, to make companies accountable who were not installing the right materials in the right locations, not using the right structure, the right type of storefront system, going too high with it, all these things that hurt the consumer when things break and fall out. Um, and now we're basically at a point of everything we say we do, we don't do anymore. So it's just a circle round and around and around and around. I mean, I've written numerous things. I got so close with, um, was it Maloney, Ed? Yes. Yeah, we, everything was written, ready to go. And then somebody higher up said, no. So I think there's some things going on behind the scenes that we're not aware of. Bingo. And honestly, I'm at the point where every time I see these cases come through, I think to myself, I really don't have to pay for licenses for my guys because we really don't do this trade apparently. And I know there's a lot of other people that really start starting to feel the same way. And part of this is John who just joined us is an auto glass. Now, how would you like to have your auto glass repaired by a guy to use bathroom caulking, took the windshield from a, a junk car out of the junkyard and put it in. And then the next thing you know, you, your child is going through the windshield when your wife slams the brakes on. And that's basically part of the license, which we are trying to keep intact so that that does not happen to the common, uh, common man, basically. And that's part of it. You see automotive glass. You say, what's about automotive glass? Well, automotive glass, the windshield is part of the structure now. Like everything else the glazer does, you need someone that knows what they're doing to install it the proper yeah, way. Yeah, part of the structure. Sure. So it all just starts with the structure of it. Well, you also have the uh, whole uh, ADAS calibration that now is, goes along with most late model cars that you have to program the camera to you know back to the the new windshield or it will pull and some some cars you have the you know the steering wheel actually pulls you and the national highway transportation has seen incidents where people have not calibrated and the car will actually pull you into oncoming traffic thank you john so so i mean we're really kind of at a crossroad to be honest i mean we're at a standstill right now jen yeah i mean so i think we can ask leslie the legislative director to come to the next meeting or even if you want to schedule you know something sooner but um to discuss this more with the legislative director i mean unfortunately right there's nothing more i can provide on it i don't know all the history i know what i've told you um and that's all i that's all i have right so um, we can try to schedule that meeting, do something, or bring her to the next meeting and talk and see if there's anything. But um, that's that's all I can offer. I, you know, years ago when we would be at our board meetings, there would be questions about a case and inspectors or DCP would come or call Ed or call me or call somebody on the board and say, hey, you know, we're not sure. Is this what you, is this your work? Well, yeah, of course it is. And they would consult with us. And now it, we're not consulted on anything. I mean, I would like to see since we were completely blindsided by these four questions, apparently these guys, what other guidelines are they going by? I mean, do we have any privy to that or any input into that? That that's not, I, I mean, you have to see our frustration that we teach the P, our apprentices to do the exact work that you're saying is not licensable. 
So it can't be both ways. We can't have a list of this is a glazer and then another list saying, this is everything that's exempt. Then we need to look at our training program because we must not, maybe we're not training the right areas. Correct. Well, as the meeting schedule goes, our next meeting is in We don't have February. a schedule yet. Do we and, have a schedule yet? Yeah, last page of the- um, Oh, okay. Yeah, you're well, right, sorry. Plus the, the session starts in January, doesn't it? The legislative session? Does anyone know? But I do. It starts I in January, know. so there'll be- it, it starts the first Wednesday, I believe, in January. Thank you. Thanks. Is that a short session or is it the long session? Does anyone know about that? It's a long, it's session. A long session. Long hey, session. John. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Hi, guys. It's John Bailey. Yes, it's the long session. So um, January 4th to uh, June. January till June. So we got time. Yeah. Well, we don't, but we do. Well, no, let's see. June. Yeah. Uh, well, we got a meeting in May, so we'll be ahead of the June meeting, but we're meeting again in August. So, how many jobs do you think we get done that way between now and August? We just need some consulting when before you say the, you give these people permission to do work out there, whether they're like they, whether they think they don't need a license or not. Let us help determine that with you. So that's all we're asking. Jen and Carl are bona fide glass shops in this area, many, many years. Matter of fact, uh, I think their parents are, were in glazing. For, that's over 40, 50 years ago. Am I correct? And, and grandparents. And grandparents. Yeah, yeah, I'm second generation, 47 years we're at. So I think they know a little bit about what they're talking about. And um, they helped get this thing where it is today. We don't need some people coming in not knowing what they're talking about and then interpreting what it should be and what it shouldn't be. That's my opinion as a, the uh, chair here. So any more discussion or are we going to just kill this thing? So, Andy, are we going to get anybody to give us the explanation? Joe, we can't hear you, Joe. Yeah, I hear you, Joe. I'm not sure why. My thing's on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's oh, good yeah. Now. Yep. yeah. Um, are, are we going to get someone to explain to us what they believe the license is so we know what you guys are considering? Because I, I don't even know what my guy, I, like she said, we have a four-year program. We teach all this stuff for four years. And I've got guys right now complaining to me that their license is no good. Why am I paying for this license? So we need a determination sooner than later on what our license is. Right. So I can, I mean, there will be a response from the department on the, the communications on the U.S. or United Steel um, that went through. So there will be a response on that, outlining some things. And we can certainly recirculate the memo from 2017 that went around. Um, like I said, you, you might want to schedule a special meeting with Leslie to talk about some of these things. You know, it's not like it's going away, right? So, um, and I, I, I think after that 2017 memo, that's what fueled all that couple years of discussion. And there's more follow up to that letter if you're referring to the one from, I think it was Ms. Avalon or Avalon. If that's the letter that sparked a, yeah, a, from our a legal big director. theory, yeah. there was a lot of correspondence that preceded that. And it ended in a meeting prior to COVID where she said that until legislative changes are made, the law stands as it is, which means unless it's a pre-glazed window or door, it is our work. It is a licensable. It is our order. trade. Mm -hmm. It is an FG one and two license. And that's the way that's it should it. Be, be determined. Yeah. Just because it's inside a building does not mean it's not licensable. So, or any of these other things. And, and, you know, I mean, I'm just frustrated because I've been on this committee and on this board for a lot of years. and. 
you get to a point where you kind of feel like we're just a thorn. Obviously, they, the state doesn't want to inspect our jobs. They don't want to find people. We bring stuff to the table. We say this is our work and we're constantly having to defend ourselves. I would be surprised if the plumbing and electrical and heating and all these other boards go through this kind of thing. I mean, a wire is a wire, uh, plumbing is plumbing. I don't think that they take a microscope yeah, and just, look up. I know, I know Janita's hands up and to defend the investigation. Yeah, no, they're working Janita's, hard, they're, they do I go know, to the Janita. jobs, they do do a thorough job, right? They're out we, there. We yeah, have some we cases absolutely. around. There's some that they have kicked to legal that we have. So they're, they're out there. Um, yeah, so it's legal that we have the problem with it. I, I think that's what it, this is boiling down to because the inspectors, we've done meetings for them. We've done demonstrations for them. We've showed them and they get it. And then they're told. So, you know, they're going to be told one time. So the next time, why would they inspect it if they've already been told handrails are exempt? Why would they follow up on another handrail case. So it, it's Point. it's all these determinations that are being made without any consulting to the to the board or you know I, I don't know. I just Jen, let's give Janita a, uh, yeah. a shot. Here. Oh yeah sure. Yep. Janita um, the one thing I will say it doesn't we investigate every complaint we receive and we inspect every job that's listed on a complaint that they're looking for an inspection because we don't we check for everybody that's on there and we go to every site we take pictures and we bring them back yep. i have one question janita do you ask for a viable license or that's my job card? Sir, Mr. Chairman, that's our job. We go on the job site and we ask to see a license or an apprentice card. Okay. If they can't produce one, we ask to see a driver's license or a picture ID. Okay. Well, you're educating us on your procedure, that's all. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It, it seems so odd that the industry knowledge that our statute seems very cut and dry. And I don't understand uh, where these alternative interpretations come from, from the legal department. That's that's my quandary. Right. right. Well, as Mr. Grabowski has stated, I guess we're gonna have to wait for someone of, other than who are here today to give us a determination how we can go about this and get it corrected. Because after, since I was elected chairman on the first meeting, I'm still frustrated. I was a Glazer for 23 years and an agent for the union fighting for our industry against other people that just walk on the job and would like to install glass because they think it's so easy and they think anybody can do it. And we go through three years of training, as Joe said, four in the union industry. Uh, and then the people just walk upon us and don't pay the 125 or 150 or whatever it is right now for a license. And we can see the frustration of all, all members of the Glazing Society, to be honest with you. So, that being said, any more on the new business at hand? Any more questions for Mr. Grabowski? For anyone on the panel? Uh, we might have to, we, we probably should schedule a special meeting at some point between now and our next meeting. Right. Okay. Other than that, that's my two cents anyway. You're absolutely right, Carl. That's why I was giving those dates out before. The February, like I said, is the 16th. We've got December and January to do something. You want to wait right after the new year? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. You, got, you know what the excuses are going to be. You know, well, it's the new year, uh, before the new year, you know, right. Christmas, New Year's, all that. So we'll get together and see if we can get someone at a meeting 
I Maybe sometime board. mid-January. Absolutely. I know the first week of January, second week of January, I'm I'm going on my first cruise. They got Wi-Fi there. That's true. <laughs> and with Zoom, you can be anywhere. This is true. Believe me, I'll uh, probably be bored. <laughs> so let the, uh, we'll do some correspondence amongst ourselves as the board and get a date, and then we'll offer it to the state and see if we can get somebody there to explain some stuff to us. And you want to see, I don't know, we have a lot of people listening in. I don't know if there's anyone that has any other comments or. I see the list is, how many people are here? Okay. 13. Well, 30, 30. Wow, congratulations. Okay. Uh, how about comments or concerns from, for anybody present today on what we just spoke or any other thing that has come up in this meeting? Any comments or concerns from anyone? Speak up. Oh, guess we did a good job in the meeting then today. Well, the only thing that I have is who, who do I talk to about getting back on the email? <laughs> uh, Shannon is our new um, consultant, I guess. There she is. Word specialist. Word specialist. Shannon, we can't hear you. <laughs> okay. I am the board coordinator, yep. um, and John, I did have a, a chance to check to see what was the email listed on the distribution list, and it's not the one that you emailed from today um, to Karen, and it's um, it, it's not the one that you mentioned in the meeting. So I do have that, and I will be sure that um, IT updates that so that you receive all the invites going forward, okay? Thank you. No problem. That was easy. Thank I tried not to be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any correspondence? No, well, just the one we spoke about. Okay, that we can't talk about, right? Right. <laughs> Uh, and then again, any comments or concerns or anyone present today? We got we just got John's situation corrected. Anyone else? Uh, all I have is a motion for adjournment. I'll make that motion. Can I get I'll a second? second? I'll second all it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for attending. Thank you for Thanks your everyone. input. Thank and you. I appreciate everyone.